to the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff, and I am the owner of The Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. If you're a new follower, thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I hope you'll be back. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. We're so happy to have you back and having you put up with my shenanigans on the video. If you are a returning viewer but have not yet subscribed, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button right down below. And also, if you are, you can hit the get notifications, which is the little bell, and that will notify you each time there is a new episode posted on YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this on something other than YouTube, like our Vimeo channel, none of that applies, so ignore that. I'm sure there is also a subscribe and some sort of notification on Vimeo as well, and I would encourage you to do that. As always, we also love thumbs ups, thumbs ups, thumb, yeah, thumb, it's too early. I have not had enough coffee. Do this to the video, not that. This helps our algorithm and lets us be seen by more people, so thank you if you can take two seconds and give us a thumbs up up. It is thumbs up. I'm overthinking it this morning. It's a very Monday feeling Tuesday. Not just because I'm actually filming the podcast on Tuesday. I normally film it on Monday. It's just a very Monday like Tuesday. You know? Crazy. I'm not a superstitious soup stupor. I am not a superstitious person. But Mercury just did go into retrograde, so who knows? Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I can't talk. Maybe I haven't had enough coffee. Maybe I didn't sleep very good last night. But none of that really matters because this is a knitting podcast or vlog or whatever we want to call it. And not a what moon is doing what backwards, how much sleep did Sharon get, and anything else podcast. So grab your beverage, mine's in my modern skein mug that I can't show you fully without breaking my wrist. I have it filled with coffee and yes, there's half and half in there because I need it this morning. So grab your, vi get something to drink y'all and buckle up because it's apparently going to be one of those kind of podcasts. Let's get started. I would love to get started, except my finished object is in the other room, but I think I already showed it to you last week. See, this is always my problem. Did I show it to you? Did I not show it to you? It's the blurry cowl. I'm pretty darn sure, I'd, sure that I showed it to you. I will grab it just in case. showed it. I know I did. I know I did. But I will bear with me. See? My blurry cowl. I know I showed this. I had to have. But maybe not. Maybe I showed it on my Instagram live video. Anyway, Blurry Cowl is finished. If this is a repeat, so sorry, speed through this. This is um, Farmer's Daughter Fiber Juicy DK in the Sam Elliott colorway, which is on order and we should have it soon. And then Mad Tosh DK um, in a <laughs> still unknown colorway because this was from my stash. But um, Antique Rose and Path from Red Stag are similar. No, I have the hiccups. Are similar. Um, Pacuna from Farmer's Daughter is also sim oh, also similar. Okay, we're gonna get through this podcast. We really are, and I'm only four minutes in. Lovely. So this is the blurry cowl from Hohi Locatelli. It does take two skeins of DK, one in each color, and it is a very quick knit. Um, I did not knit 
monogamously on it, but it still took me, I think, I would say if I added it all up together, five nights of knitting, if even that much. It took me longer because I misread my pattern and I had to basically rip out halfway through and almost start over, but you'll, you will do good and you will read your pattern. I don't really have any other finished objects to show you that I actually finished this week, but this is an oldie but goodie that I will show you real quick. This is the Portage by, oh, I believe her handle is Dandelion Knits, Melissa Sh something or other, Shermeyer, something like that, but it's the Portage cardigan. You can see there's, hopefully you can hear me, there's a lot of texture on the back. And then there's this little cable detail down the side. And then it's stockinette with a nice garter lapel. And then pockets. The best part. Again, this is the Portage cardigan, and if you look it up, you can see it. The colorway, um, the yarn I used is Suburban Stitcher, um, her Merino DK, and the colorway is Oslo. We are, as usual, sold out, but we are expecting a order from Diane in the next little bit, although I don't know that DK, I know I ordered some Oslo, but I don't know if I got any on DK or not. But we have lots and lots of DK yarn that this would look gorgeous in. Red Stag Fibers Estate or Croft DK would be fantastic. Kilborn Woolens, if you want a solid heathered look, you will be able to see the lattice cabling. It's not really a cable, but the lattice stitch uh, pattern in the back really well with a solid. Um, you could even do this in dapple. You really could. Um, it will give you a different weight and feel, um, but you really could do it in dapple. You could also do this in, I have a, quite a bit of hedgehog um, in variegated colors, such as like the Oslo. Um, I have beetle, insomnia, I think there's enough um, of echo, um, there may be enough taffy. Because uh, you're going to need, my size, I believe I used six skeins, and I knit the 40, I want to say there's a 41 inch size. Um, I want to say that's what I did. Um, but any of those would be really great. And like I said, Scout by Kelborn Woolens. You could do this in Arbor too. Um, Arbor's DK, you could definitely do that. I'm also trying to think. I've got got some DK weight yarn on order, and it should be coming in soon. Some new yarns. So, as you can see, we're in the process of filling our red stag wall, which we chatted about a little bit yesterday. But you can't really see it from this angle. We are in the process of giving the shop a new look for 2021. Now, yes, in 2020, February actually, is when we moved into the new space, February 5th actually. Um, and I say the new space, we busted through this wall. There used to be a wall behind me, FYI. We used to only be basically the half of our current store space. We busted through both um, walls, side walls. Um, that was in February, and, you know, we we got the shop almost to where I wanted it, and then 2020 happened, <laughs> and we shut down, and it kind of stalled what we were going to do with the shop, and the vision for the shop, and, you know, everything was just so up in the air last year, and not that it isn't now, but I feel like there's there's hope and there's a breath and and no matter what the what is going on in the world we have a plan for the shop so 
um, we're executing that plan, which always seems to happen in February, but that's fine. So the shop's in a wee bit of disarray. We are trying to keep it um, as put together as possible for you guys because we're not, I can't take the time to close the shop fully. We're just been working crazy over the weekends and later at night and early in the morning. Literally, that's why I didn't podcast yesterday because we were here all day Sunday and pretty much, well, not all day yesterday, really only in the afternoon because I ran down to Ikea and picked up a ridiculous amount of new fixtures. And then I have more fixtures being delivered today and tomorrow. So, so exciting. Um, not only will be able to hold more yarn, it will be easier to navigate. Not that I feel like the shop is hard to navigate right now because I do my very best to really keep everything super organized, but there's still some spots in the shop that it's like, this just doesn't work and it's going to work now. So it's a fresh, it's a new year. It's a fresh look. I keep turning to look at part of what got accomplished yesterday. That's why I keep turning. Um, but as soon as it's done, I would love for it to be done this week. I honestly don't know that it will be done this week. Um, but as soon as it is done, we will do a shop tour on the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, sorry. I just can't get over how good this one, this very small section that's kind of like done, done looks and it's like oh can't wait so pictures will be coming video tour will be coming on the podcast for sure that being said we have a lot of yarn that's on its way which is so exciting um we are restocking a lot of old favorites that honestly with the shop i had not realized how sold out of a lot of our old favorites had become so we've reordered a whole lot of those. We're getting in some new bases from some of our current suppliers. So be on the lookout for that. We're looking in at um, bringing in a couple new lines as well. Those have been ordered. Um, yeah, so basically starting, I don't know that anything, any yarn is gonna arrive this week. I, I don't think so, but starting next week, Yarn should start arriving and it's going to be so cool. Well, I say that yarn is arriving from Red Stag this week um, because I'm bringing it in my gar. Uh, that's a fun fact when you know the dyer personally. But yeah, so that kind of got sidetracked a little bit. I do want to pop on and show you what I'm working on right now. So I don't know if you are a viewer from way back when you know that I have done quite a bit of test knitting for some big name designers. Um, I've test knit for Hohi Locatelli uh, several times. I have test knit for Lavagna Petrosella. Gosh, I've test knit for Lavagna for like two years, three years straight, almost every pattern she released. Um, I've tested it for a few other people as well. Um, but I jumped back into it. I had taken almost the past two years off of test knitting just because it's been busy with the shop and everything. But I saw this test call go out and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put in for it because I feel like doing it. And I'll say it's an easy one for me to do because it's it's not like it's cables or lace or anything like that. It's a sweater, top down sweater. It'll it's flying off the needles, and I haven't even had that much time to work on it. But it's also an Aran weight, so it goes quickly, and I could definitely meet the deadline. So I do have permission to show you a little bit of it. Um, I'm not going to show any of the pattern, obviously. Um, the designer is Alicia Plummer. And it is, I don't know that it has a name other than Justin's Flannel, um, which is her husband. Um, that may be the working name, the actual name. I know that's kind of our working name in the test group. Um, but it's a top-down raglan um, 
men's slash unisex because honestly I would wear this um but just really nice textured flannel she calls it a flannel it I would call it more like a thermal um sweater so I have not split for sleeves yet I've got like three more rounds and then I'll split for sleeves so you can just see there's a little texture stitch in here so it's not like boring stockinette you've got raglan shaping for the sleeves yeah I think I'm I need to recount but I think you also have a it's gonna be like a crew neck so I'm gonna come back later and pick up um, for the neck band but it's gonna be like a crew neck which is gonna be really nice and not just a round neck but actually like not that deep obviously it'll come down probably about like here so like a legitimate manufactured crew neck um, I want to say I'm four rounds away oh, excuse me, from splitting for the sleeves so I've kind of got a lot of needles uh, a lot of stitches on my needles but it's gonna be so cozy uh, the pattern I'm getting gauged with Aran weight yarn and I dropped down the needle so I'm knitting it on a seven uh, she's gonna call for unless it's wildly different with all of the rest of the test knitters but I think I'm the only one that dropped down I think she's gonna call for an eight and say to use anywhere from a heavy worsted to Aaron. I know some of the other testers are using Rios by Malabrigo, which that's one that we are restocking. Um, I had not realized how low we had gotten in it. Um, unfortunately, Malabrigo is also a little huh, low on supply, but we're going to be getting what we can soon, as soon as they can ship it to us. Um, but basically, a heavy worsted to Aaron. Uh, would be a great yarn for this. She originally knit the pattern um, that she did for writing it in Julie Oslin's Nurtured, um, which is a little more of a rustic wool. I am using Red Stag Fiber um, Estate Erin, which is 100% superwash merino. Super soft. Um, like I said, some other people are using Malabrigo Rios. I would suggest you could... Um, also do the earth worsted um, either the harvest or monochrome line would be really cool you could even do self stripe the um, unique line which that's another one we're getting more in um, you could also use Germantown and you could easily use wool folk uh, wool folk wool stock um, by blue sky any of those are gonna get you gauge now patterns not out yet it should be out in about I think her target date is do the math at when I started it maybe six weeks from now five to six weeks from now somewhere in there um so stay tuned for the pattern but Alicia does have several other designs in um, basically that same gauge a worsted to heavy um, uh, heavy worsted to Aaron um, that are gorgeous uh, there's like the name I had the name completely memorized until just now but there's this gorgeous kind of lacy elbow length sleeve sweater with a little cowl neck or she has an option for no cowl and um, that's super cute definitely take a look it's fairly new design um, but yeah just take a look at her designs they're really nice she has a lot of wearable designs um, with all ability levels so if you're new to sh let's just say sweaters she's got things like campsite cardi which are really nice but m really easy to do um, and if you really like the looks of it but you don't want to tackle a sweater there's campsite shawl I, I don't think it's called campsite shawl I think it's like campfire shawl or something but it's the, kind of the sister um, to that I know years ago I knit a sweater of hers called Briquette, um, which is really cool because it started out a stockinette and then you kind of like diagonally swooped it into reverse stockinette and it had a hood, which was really cool. I actually did not knit the hood. I knit a cowl instead because I was running out of, uh, I did a cowl neck, I was running out of yarn. Um, yeah. So she has some really cool patterns. Um, we have the In Stillness cardigan that's a DK weight cardigan as a store sample um, out of Red Stag Fiber as well. 
So I've mostly been working on this, but as you know, I've still got my stripes by Andrea Mowry. I've done like two stripes on there. I really have not worked much on it because I got the test knit and I do want to get that done and I don't want to be behind. I'd rather be ahead. Um, I also got a couple more rounds on Snowy Forest. Let me show you that. I finished that round of decreases or increases. So I have done my third cable. I have just some straight more to do. And then I have my last cable and increase round. And then I think right after that, then you split for sleeves. But I did go ahead and tack down my neck, which is making it look so good and cozy. Love this. So for this pattern, I am using Kelborn Wool and Scout. Um, and they are, of course, out of stock of the color that I have, which is graphite. Um, no, charcoal. I don't know. One of the grays. They're out of stock. Um, but as soon as it's back in, we will be restocking this. And then Biche and Boosh Black Mohair on its way. So don't worry about that, because we are also out of that. But we are restocking all the colors of Biche and Boosh Mohair, because y'all love it so much. There's another one that we're getting in. So this um, this is Snowy Forest by Miyadora Hirosa. Her I always put the A at the end. There is no A. It's Miyadori Hiros. That's it. I don't know why I want to put the A on the end. Um, it is only available in Lina Magazine issue 10, which we are also sold out of. Thank you so much to everyone who ordered it. However, we are getting it in. So I'm going to put the pre-order back up on the website. Um, it should ship this, maybe yesterday it shipped, yesterday or today. So by next week we should have it, just depending on any uh, international shipping delays. Um, what else? Ah, Pemberton Pullover. I have news of Pemberton Pullover. First off, do as I say, not as I do. This is my Pemberton Pullover. You might think, that looks weird. That doesn't look like the one in the pattern. No. You want to know why? Because my gauge is off. Yes. Did I gauge swatch? No. Did I tell everyone else to do a gauge swatch? Yes. Me, knowing I knit looser, did I go ahead and automatically go down at least one needle size to get even closer to gauge? No. I'm Sharon, and I have a problem with not swatching. I guess, yeah. Or I have a problem with swatching, because I don't swatch. Whatever. So, long story short, my gauge, my row gauge and stitch gauge is so off, this has to be completely ripped out from the beginning. No saving it whatsoever. I know it's sad. Some of you probably just about passed out in front of your computer right now, but it's okay. It does not bother me to rip it out because I know, well, for one, I love this color and I will wear the snot out of it as long as it fits me. And right now, not only is it too big width-wise, which it's supposed to be oversized, that's not as big of a deal, but because my row gauge is so wildly off, the design is not, like I'm, I'm missing the top half of all the design work and my armpit's like four inches too long. So it's just, it's not a salvageable piece. It's way better that I just rip it out and start anew. So I'll be ripping this out today. I was going to rip it out last week. I guess it was Friday maybe when I discovered this or Saturday. No, not Saturday, Friday. Um, but I, I did keep it because I wanted to show you guys. So really that's the thing. You need to measure your gauge. Now what I should have done because I know I wasn't going to do a gauge swatch is once I was, you know, a couple inches into here, I should have taken my gauge. And then I would have known here that I had screwed up and I could have restarted rather than waiting till I was here. But I found a few issues 
Um, with the pattern, they have since been rectified, so there's errata for it. But the chart wasn't lining quite up, so I kind of messed with it a little bit. Um, so I've got that worked out. Excuse me. Um, yeah. It's going to look super cute. And it won't look quite as sloppy. It's like right now, it's it's a little loose. I mean, the stitches are loose. So, and I'm nowhere near gauge. My, I think the gauge, well, what is, what is the actual recommended gauge here? Recommended gauge is 19 stitches and 29 rows. Your gal here has 17 stitches for four inches and 22 rows. Ergo, it's a heck of a lot bigger. And I was already knitting the small. So it's not like I could just go down in size. I have to go down in needle size. But that's okay. It's perfectly fine. Don't cry. I'm not crying. It's always just a learning experience with your knits. Yeah, is this a several hours of knitting? Yes, it's more than several hours of knitting. It's like two weeks worth of knitting, but it's okay. I've learned from my mistake. I hopefully have taught you something from it and you can avoid that mistake by checking your gauge. And I'll have a sweater that I really love at the end of the day. Yeah, it takes me a little bit longer because I gotta re-knit it, but it's okay because it'll be what I want it to be. So, moving on, I want to show you the new colors that we do have currently on the website from Red Stag in the Riyadh base. So if you're not familiar with Riyadh, it's a base we've had before, but in very limited colors, and now we're getting the whole color palette in. So Riyadh is a non-wool yarn. What I mean by that is, if you have a wool allergy, this yarn is great for you. It is 50% silk and 50% baby camel. So it is actually, because camel, a camelid is considered a hypoallergenic wool, uh, fiber, not wool. Um, and so it is so soft, like baby butt soft, like little baby kitty cat soft. I can't describe to you how soft this is. Softer than cashmere. It's got the sheen from the silk. And it has a teeny little, I don't know if you can see this, teeny little fuzzy halo. Kind of like, you know, you'll get a little halo from alpaca. Not quite as much, um, but you get a little bit of a halo. But it's not a prick or anything from the camel. So it's a fingering weight, it has 438 yards, and this is the colorway key. The cool thing is because camel is naturally, it's not white like wool, it naturally has like a golden undertone, like it looks gold. It gives everything this warm golden color, because you know key from Red Stag is like, like a light, cool teal color, and this is just warm and yummy and gorgeous. So I'm gonna show you all the colors. That's key. This is of course Her Majesty's Navy. Look at that, it's so rich and shiny. I love it, love it. This is Path, gorgeous rich teddy bear brown. This is Walsh Mantle, deeper version. And this is a classic. So. They look kind of similar on camera, but this is more of a red undertone and this is more chocolate brown. So some of the colors on the Riyadh, you can really tell the difference and some are a little bit um, similar. This is antique linen. See how warm, because you know normally antique linen is like cream, like linen. And see how warm and golden this is? This is so pretty. So pretty. This is cobblestone. Just warms up that gray. This might be my favorite color on the Riyadh. Royal Mantle. It's like glowing. It's so rich and purple and shiny and amazing. 
Then we have English Rose. Love this. We have St. Andrews. Pretty green. Running out of room. This is Scottish Thistle. Scottish Thistle comes out more variegated and tonal uh, on this one, which is really pretty. This is Lock. This is Gloss. This is Jewel of the King. And this is Isle of Harris. This is Stonegate, really rich color. This is Gilded. Let me show you this. And then this is Sunshine. So it's his other yellow, but this one's brighter. This one's darker. So this is Sunshine. This is Gilded. And these are kind of all in that same similar family. So this is Kelvin Grove. This is William of Orange. And this is Antique Leather. So you can just see the tonalities in there. And then, actually, we've got one more in that range. Ow. Uh, let me bring this back up. And then Scottish Sunset. So there's your color differences. So Scottish Sunset, Kelvin Grove, William of Orange, and Antique Leather. Then we've got Red Stag. I didn't get that one. Hold on. So this is Red Stag and this is Great Hall. So Red Stag has a more orange undertone and Great Hall has a more cherry blue-red undertone. This is Cairngorms. The difference between St. Andrews and Cairngorm, so St. Andrews is cooler, Cairngorms is a warmer, and slightly more tonal. French waistcoat, perennial favorite, of course, passport, such a pretty color. And then Castle Rock, um, let me just show you. So this is Antique Linen, this is Castle Rock. This is cobblestone. And this is Stonegate. And then we have Welsh Mantle. That's not yet here. But you can see the differences. Ta da! Beautiful gradient, if you were doing. So, um, this yarn, because of the silk content, I recommend sticking to shawls. Um, slouchy hats, scarves, cowls, uh, tees, tanks, and cardigans that are supposed to be kind of a slouchy, not a structured item. Um, silk typically and alpaca both tend to grow um, a wee bit after blocking. Um, so just be mindful of that if you are doing, let's say, a tee or a tank, um, it's going to end up being probably just say you do 10 inches from the armpit once it's blocked and on you for a little bit it's probably going to go to about 12 inches it's just the nature of silks and camelid fibers um, that they're going to do that so you can stop a little sooner and you don't have to knit quite as much um, but just be mindful of that so like as far as sweaters I wouldn't do something with color work I wouldn't do something with cables or super structured things but you could definitely do like anything you would do in plant-based fibers like um, the Rift, um, Gracious, Anchor Summer Tea, um, um, what else, the Hayward, um, the Tegna, um, uh, a lot of the Petite Knit stuff because she does a lot with silks, um, the Veronica, um, a lot of those things that are supposed to be kind of oversized, easy going, like I wouldn't do the portage in it, but
but any of those would be great garments to do in this. And if you want some recommendations, just give me a holler and we'll be more than happy to get you some recommendations on what you want. Or if you'd like, oh, I really want to do this pattern, would it work for that yarn? Absolutely, just shoot me an email or a DM or whatever and we'll be a happy to help. Uh, this chair is slouchy. Uh, see, I'm just you know, all over the place. It's sunny. So there's sunshine, which that makes me happy. But I have no idea what time it is. I, I still don't have any idea what time it is. But I need to go because I need to jump off and probably start my Instagram live and then get to work because we got things to do in the shop. So Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any um, comments or recommendations of patterns you'd like me to feature, drop them below. Give me a comment. I'd love to feature some pattern requests and pairings for yarns um, on the podcast. So drop me what patterns and pairings you want to see for next week's episode below, and we will go from there. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.